Howdy. I know we all have prayers. My mother has pneumonia. Everybody has some issues. So let's bow our heads in prayer. Almighty Father, what a joy and a privilege to meet together with fellow believers on this holy Sabbath day. Raise up our voices in praise and adulation. Also, Lord, you know all those silent prayers that we have. And I just want to thank you for your love and your mercy. Be with our speaker this day. And bless each and every word that comes forth from his mouth, that it will bless us. Our visitors that are here, we thank you for them. And let us show them our generosity with our potluck. This is our community outreach. We love you, Father. Continue to guide and direct us as we make our way towards thy kingdom. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Thank you. 
Hello, church family. Wow, it's good to see you, each one of you. We've got a lot of people here today. Praise the Lord. So good to see each one of you. Uh, wow, thank you to the Blotar family. What a blessing. What a blessing. What a ministry. Through it all, through it all, we've learned to trust the Lord. You know, God allows us to go through things. He does because he loves us. And through going through these things, we learn to trust the Lord. You know, we're going to be saved through our faith, right? Yeah. So, Cindy and I have had a, uh, a good week. We've been at the Oklahoma camp meeting. And, uh, you know, to God's glory, by His grace, this will be the eighth time that I've spoke in eight days, seven days. <laughs> so, don't be afraid to turn my volume up a little bit. Uh, so that, uh, but praise God. God is God is blessing, and but I did say the best for lies. Yeah, this uh, I've titled. God has given me this message. What happens when Jesus steps in to your hopeless situation? As I look about the crowd, I know things that are going on in in lives that that are out there, and and I know that some of you might appear you're up against a hopeless situation. And, and I believe this message is right on time, and I think that, that, um, that God has a word for you. So open up your Bible to John chapter 5. John chapter 5. It's a familiar story in the Bible, but maybe I can bring out a, a couple of things that, that you have not thought of that, that might help you with what you're going through. Uh, you know, with Jesus, we have hope. Can I get an amen from that? Amen. Yeah. With, with Jesus, we have hope. You know, there's one thing that Jesus offers us that the world can't offer us. No matter what your situation is, no matter how dark it appears, no matter how bleak it appears, no matter how long you've been going through this situation, with Jesus, we have hope. It's really that simple. With Jesus, we've got hope. I don't care what he said or what she said or what he's doing or or what she's doing, or, or what the doctor said, or what the judge said, I want you to know when Jesus steps in, we have hope. We do. We've got hope. So, um, John chapter 5 and verse 1. John chapter 5, verse 1. Let me have a prayer before we jump into this. Father in heaven, dear God, one more time. When we open up the word... May your word come into us. We desperately need a word from you. Pour out your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. John chapter 5 verse 1. After this there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which, he, which, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at certain times into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water 
was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and he knew that he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? And the sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I'm coming, another steps down before me. And Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed, and walk. In verse 14, I want to bring this now to, Afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple, and he said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more. Least a worse thing come upon you. Sin no more, lest a worse thing comes upon you. Now the Bible says that, that Jesus comes into town. He comes into town... And, and he, it's for one of the feast celebrations. And he decides to stop by, can I call it the, the world poo? The world poo. And it, but it was more like an ER trauma unit at like New York City. That's really what it was more like. A place where the sickest of the sick lay at. The ones, you know, with no hope. Uh, the ones that, that no one could help them. They couldn't get any help from anyone else. Their, their lives were a mess. You know, it was even thought of then, and maybe even some now, when some people are fighting different sicknesses that there seems to be no hope for, that it's something that maybe your past life brought on. They especially even taught that back in that day. So they were outcasts. Nobody really cared. You know, they, they camped out at this pool because they heard from someone that on, on certain times that an angel of God would step in and stir the water. And as the water was stirred and it started bubbling, the first one, into, the first one that got in the pool would be healed. The first one that could make it there. It was kind of a dog-eat-dog -dog kind of situation, wasn't it? Not much hope there, only one person. Only one person. You know, but I would have thought, you know, I would have thought that, that Jesus would have just walked up and would have jumped into the pool, and every one of them would have been healed. Right? That's what I would have thought. But if you think about that, that would have taken away their individual choice. Right? It would take away their individual choice. Individually, we're saved through our faith. It's personal. It's got to be personal here. And verse 5 says that there was one man... They had been dealing with this problem for 38 years. You know, that's a long time to be dealing with something, isn't it? This man is in a hopeless situation. You know how I know it's a hopeless situation? Because he'd been dealing with it for a long, long, long time. You know, I think, I know, that there are those here today that's been dealing with something for a long, long, long time. And it appears hopeless. Year after year, after year after year, the problem does not go away. It's just still there. Still hanging around. It won't go away. You know, I want, to, I want to show you something in verse 6 here. Because this might be you. In verse 6. Now I want to read this out of the King James Version. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, out of the next few verses here, I'm going to make three points. And I'm going to be finished. But these are three very important points that you need to take note of because this, God has got a word for you today. 
Verse 6, starting at verse 6, John 5, out of the King James Version, because I like the way it really draws out the point that I believe Jesus was really wanting to make here. When Jesus saw him lie and knew he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? Now, will thou be made whole? Now, picture this. Jesus is walking by this whirlpool. People everywhere. It's a feast going on. People come from all directions, from all around. All kind of things going on in people's mind. All kind of things happening in people's lives. And here's this one guy, this one guy in a multitude of people in the midst of all this, and Jesus knew. You catch that? He knew. He, he knows his condition. All these people, this one guy, but Jesus knows his condition. And I'm not just talking about his physical condition. He knows everything. He knows everything about this guy. Jesus knew. This story should give us a lot of hope. This should give each one of us a lot of hope here. Jesus knows. He knows. There's nothing that's going, that you could be going through right now that Jesus does not know about. He knows. Nothing that you're facing, nothing that you're struggling with, nothing that your family's going through, that you've been going through over and over and over, that He does not know. And he cares. He cares. You know, we, we try to hide the fact that we're struggling, don't we? We come to church. We put on our howdy-doody faces. We don't want nobody to know we're struggling. But Jesus knows. He knows. You don't, you don't have to play games with Jesus. You don't have to put on a happy face for Jesus because he knows he and he cares he cares Jesus has got a word for hopeless people today in this story in the Bible for someone maybe that's been dealing with something for a long 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 time Verse 6. Point number one, Jesus knows. Jesus knows. Point number two, Jesus saw him. Verse 6. And he knew him. And then he says something I don't want you to miss. He says, do you want to be made whole? Whole. Key word. Now, I want, you, I want you to think about this. What's Jesus trying to teach us here? All Scripture is given for our instruction, right? All Scripture. He says, do you want to be made whole? Well, that sounds like kind of a silly question to ask the guy. Now, he'd been laying there. He'd been in this condition for 38 years. I mean, Jesus, really? Do, do you want to be made whole? But I want you to think about something. We all know people. We, we, we all know people whose life is in a mess. And, and, and they know they need to let Jesus fix their life. But they say, no, not right now. Not right now. Not right now. Not... Uh, when I graduate, 
then, then you can come in and straighten me out. When I get married, then you can come in and straighten me out. You know, when I, it's always down the road. You know, procrastination is one of the devil's secret tools that he uses on good people. He does. Always going to do it tomorrow. 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 Jesus looks at us today. Do you want to be set free from your temper? Do you want to be set free from your lust? Do you want to be set free from you fill in the blank? This guy had been that way for 38 years. And Jesus said, do you want to be made whole? Why that man? Why that man? And all the people there, you, all the people there, why him? And why that question? You know, why, why that question? And why does he use the word, do you want to be made whole? Because Jesus wanted to heal that man completely. Completely. He doesn't want just to fix a messed up outside and leave a messed up inside. Amen? Jesus doesn't want to answer your prayers just putting a band-aid on the sore. He wants to heal what caused the sore. Jesus is saying, I don't want to just fix what's wrong in your situation. I want to fix what caused it. I want to get to the root of the problem. You know, a, a lot of folks want God to, to, to heal them. A lot of folks uh, want, get my body out of this bed. Get my body out of this situation here. Just don't mess with my life doing it. Let me live my life. Just fix the broken world. You know, it's possible that we could be praying for the wrong thing. If we're praying, Lord, get me out of the mess that I'm in, and you're not praying, fix whatever's in here. If you're not praying, fix whatever's in here that's broken. If you're not praying that prayer, what we're saying is I don't want to be made whole. I just want to be made half whole. Right? The message here today is that Jesus wants to make you whole inside and out. Praise God. New. Transform. Jesus knows. He knows what you're going through. Jesus wants to make you whole. He wants to make you whole. Inside and out. Complete. Thirdly. Listen this. Verse 6. So Jesus asked him, Do you want to be made whole? And then verse 7. Don't miss this. Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred. I have no man to put me in the... Do you want to be made whole? I have no man to put me in the, in the poo. Are, are, you getting, are you getting something here that he's saying? Are you getting... Are you get, do, you, do you know the life's point already? I mean, do you realize who he's talking to? Jesus asked him, do you want to be made whole? He's talking to the creator of the world. He's talking to the great I am. He, he, he's, he's talking to the great healer standing right there in front of him, asking him, do you want to be made whole? And the guy and the man looks up, and, and don't miss this. Follow me here. The man looks up at him, but really he looks past Jesus to the water. Are you catching that? 
Where was his hope at? In the water. The hope was in the, in the water. And basically he says, my hope is in the water and I can't get to it. Are you following me here? That's where his hope was at. It's a story of a lot of us. This is a story of a lot of us. We're putting our hope in the wrong thing. We are. It's the story of everyone that was at that pool that day. Every single person at that pool that day was hoping to do what? Get in the water. They were hoping to get in the water. If it was stirred. And only one of them. And only one of them. Would have been healed to begin with. Yet Jesus Christ. The great healer. The great I am was standing in their presence. And not one of them cried out to Jesus Christ. Not one of them did that for help. Charles Spurgeon said, A blindness had come over these people at the pool. They were there and Christ was there. But not a single one sought him. Their eyes were fixed on the water, expecting it to be troubled. They were so taken up with their chosen way that the true way was neglected. Mercy. We cannot let that happen to us. Look to Jesus, friends. Look to Jesus. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Satan is making sure that we've got storms in our life. Doing everything he can to distract us. Doing everything he can to discourage us. Fix your eyes upon Jesus. Fix your eyes upon him. We, we, do, we do this. It's, it's our nature it's, it's, it, it, we're just bent to do that. We do it. We, we choose to look. Do, we choose. We choose what will give hope to us. And what gives us a future. And what we want. And we choose to look at it. I mean, don't we have a tendency to do that? To look at other things? I mean, to say or to do. If only I get this. If only I could get this. You know, I'd be happy. If I, if I could just get this promotion. You know, if I could just get this new job. You know, if I could just, if I could just marry that boy. If I could just marry that girl. If I could just, and we could go on and on and on. Don't we? Don't we do that? We all do. And everything will be good if I could just get this. Oh, if we could just get in the church. We could be the church. We have a tendency of looking past the Savior of the world and looking at what we think will give us hope and fix our problem. Jesus was standing there and not one person asked for help. Not one person. You know, always tomorrow, isn't it? You know, we're going to give our life to Jesus, but we're going to give it to Him tomorrow. We're constantly looking past Jesus. Every one of us are doing that. Is there anything going on in your heart today? Is there anything going on in your life today that, that this describes you? Are you putting your hope in the wrong place? Could you be doing that today? And I believe that every one of us are guilty of this. Every single one of us. Jesus is standing here today. He's standing here today, church. He's standing in your presence. Do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be made this is this, this scripture is a story that God has given to you today. 
Jesus is standing here. Do you want to be made whole? Are you willing to do it now? Again, it's by our nature. When you're in high school, it's all oh, when I graduate. You're in college when I graduate. When you're middle age, you know, it's, it's, you've got another reason. You're going to, whatever, there's always going to be when I do this or when I do that. But are you willing to be made whole today? What I want to encourage you to do is not to put off. Today, do you want to be made whole? Let Jesus come into your life and work in your life from inside out. I'm going to ask the Blotar family to come up and close us in a song. And then I've got... Then I've got a, um, as they're singing, I want to go ahead and make the appeal. Do you want to be made whole? The power in the presence of God to heal and to make you whole is here today. Do you want to be made whole? points. Jesus knows what you're going through. 
He knows what you're going through. And He cares. He wants to make you whole. He's not putting you through some type of torture chamber, a chamber of some sort. When we get to heaven, we're not, we're not going to go up to Jesus and say, Oh, why did I have to go through this? My row was too and unfair, unfair. Kim's row was a lot easier than mine. No, we're going to say heaven was cheap enough. Trust Him. This might be for someone else what you're going through. They might need to see your faith. Sometimes our faith needs to be seen. Jesus knows. He cares. Do you want to be made whole? And friends, are we looking to Jesus? Are we looking to Jesus? As we look to Jesus, as we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, He's going to help us through the storms. He's going to help us all the way through it. If we keep our eyes on Jesus, no matter what you're going through, no matter how hard it is, no matter how difficult, no matter how dark, if you keep your eyes on Jesus, this road that you're walking down will lead to eternal life. Now, I want to, I want to, I want to make a, an altar call, but, but I don't want anybody to get up. Because we, because it's just so many of us and be crowded here. So right where you're sitting at, I want to go, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. The power to heal and make whole is here. Jesus is able. One of the things I've been praying for, for me personally, is that, is that God would help me with my unbelief. That, that, that He would help my faith in such a way that I would believe that God is able to do everything that He said He's able to do. Lord, help our unbelief. Friends, God is able. And that's our first step, is maybe believe that God believes that He can take care of your situation. And believe that God loves you and He cares about you. And that, and that His plan for you is eternal. So I want to give each one of you a chance to, to cry out to God. To look, not look at the water, not look at the pool, not look at all these other things that we put our trust in and our hope in, but to look to Jesus and grab a hold of Jesus and not let go. So let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to cry out to God. And then I'll close this in prayer. thinking of Romans 8 26 talking about we don't even know what to pray or how to pray but the Holy Spirit steps in for us dear God dear Spirit dear Holy Spirit please pray for my church family help them pray help them pray help them take their prayers take our prayers Lord they're weak we're just humans take our prayers Lord Put a beautiful incense on them and carry them all the way to the throne room. Dear Jesus, apply your precious blood to our prayers, Lord. We want to be made whole. We want to be made whole, Lord. Lord, create in us a, a new heart. Renew a right spirit within us, Lord. Take away our self-willed heart. And give us a God-willed heart. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you.